It's me, Last One Seventy Nine. It's one game. I can just walk in and out of your store. Hello, gamers. It's me, I Spill of 79. It's my show. Glad to be back, man. Hello, gamers. Welcome to Spill of My Guts, Episode 9. This is Light Spiller 79. It's my podcast. Uh, glad to be back to do one. It's been a couple months. Um, I think the last one I did was back in July or something like that, I think it was. Um, it had to be because it was around E3 time. Um, anywho, I, I wanted to get back into doing podcasts, I guess with the whole fall season approaching and winter will be following shortly after. And it's just one of the things that I kind of got away from, you know, my, my channel took off in a direction that was working out for me. And, you know, I, um, for the most part, I've been posting two videos a week. So I've been pretty happy about that, but I've also just kind of, my channel's taken the direction of talking about topics. And usually I left that up to my podcast. So I kind of got away from it just because of that. And plus, I've just been so fucking busy with everything. I haven't had time to do my normal shit that I, I normally would do. So I really didn't have the time. But um, I started thinking about it. And, you know, I've been chatting with my good buddy, Steven, um, a.k.a. Games Not Loaded. Him and I, we talk like several times a week. I can't even keep up with it. But um, before I just get all into a tangent of talking about that, uh, the title of this is basically going to be about tips to help your channel grow. Um, you know, your YouTube channel, any and all aspects of it, whether you're doing gaming, comics, movies, DVDs, whatever, reviews, all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to get in and talk about that and just the gaming community in general. Um, stuff that I just really wanted to get into. I haven't just really, really been able to elaborate on. And um, like I, I said in my 600 subscribers episode or video, this episode will be available for download. Um, all you got to do is click on the link in the description. Um, I'm probably just going to say download podcast here or something like that. But there will be a link. And like I said, there's a link to all my old podcasts. So you pretty much can take advantage of that. It's all at your own discretion, whether or not you want to take advantage of it. So, yeah, um, the funny thing is, as the progress of my channel has been going up and I'm really proud of it. And I'm because this is it's like my baby that I've been watching grow and everything that's been happening um, you know, I say it's been happening so fast and I keep saying that same thing, but it really is because there was a point where I was struggling to get my channel to a, a certain level and really it was just more of a reflection. But, um, yeah, conversations I've been having with Steven from Games Not Loaded, you we, we talk like several times a week and we just chat it up um, and him and I been trying to put our heads together because we're thinking about doing a live stream together. You know, and I think that would be pretty cool because that's just one of the things that that I think is just very vital. But before I even get into the tips and and things and stuff like that, I wanted to go back over some of the videos and recap over some of your feedback that I got, you know, uh, which was pretty cool. And then, you know, I, I'll just kind of go in on my thoughts like the canceled video where I talked about my cancellation of my PS4. It was like, I, I got to talk about it, but I think a lot of people, for the majority, they understood. And then some, it was almost like half was over here and half was over there trying to figure out why would you do that, you know? And just to elaborate a little bit further in detail, cause I don't remember everything I talked about in that video. That was a few months. It was probably about a month or so back. I can't even honestly shit. I can't even fucking remember, 
But um, what started to happen for me back in June, I started to think about the PS4. I would go over to my homeboy's house, one of my good buddies, and I would play it and I would enjoy it. I would have fun for the most part. But also at the same time, I started looking at the software lineup. And I started doing a comparison between the PS3 lineup when it released and how many games was there and the same thing for the 360. And and it it, it kind of pissed me off a little bit because and the reason why I say that is because it seemed like Sony and Microsoft just felt like because we're putting out a new console, people should just buy it. Don't worry about what games come along with it. And that's the whole bit with this remaster thing. And and the remaster thing is kind of getting on my nerves, too, because they're remastering a game that just came out last year. And it's like that's not really a leap and bound in technology. Now, I get those games that came out like five, ten years ago and they're being remastered and, and dropped on the PS4 or the, or the Xbox One. Those are kind of interesting, like the remaster of uh, Resident Evil one or the first one. I think that's a bright idea. I mean, there's there's people out there that never played it. I myself never played Resident Evil one. Like I can't recall right off the top of my head. Now, all the other ones I have played, you know, I've I've had my fair share of experience with those and definitely have enjoyed it. But um, yeah, man, I got people that uh, <laughs> I got mixed reviews on it. You know, some people were down with the idea because they understood that I was coming from the aspect of there's so many games out there still in the retro world. There's thousand upon thousand. I think there's a total of 8,000. Don't quote me on this, but I think there's like a total of 8,000 games out there, eight to 10,000 games out there. And I only got 600 plus. And so the retro world is still yet to be chipped away at. I know I won't be able to have all the games in the world, but I know that each console that I have, and I have 11 consoles, so it, I just didn't see the, the logic in spending that money on a system and then not really using it to its full potential. Like my PS2 and my PS3, my um, Nintendo 64 and my Super Nintendo and my Nintendo so somewhere between my Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PS2, and PS3, I spend the most time on those. The other ones, like the Xbox comes after the original, they start to get a lot of playtime out of me and stuff like that. And so with having these games, I also came to the realization that I needed to slow down with the amount of games that I was buying. and Because I knew that it was getting to a point where I'm buying these games, and I'm playing them, and I'm enjoying them, but I wanted to experience the games to this full potential and i hope you understand where i'm coming from when i say that because starting up a game playing it for a few hours and saying just to be able to say you play the game is different than actually going through the full experience of the game and so i wanted to get back to the essence of why i love gaming and the ps4 will be out there forever you know i can always go out and get one and i might get one in 2015 or 2016 but right now, there's nothing that's just wowing me right now. You know, I mean, the games are fun. The graphics are awesome. There's some great potential out there. And I, I see that and I take it for what it's worth. I don't look I don't look at it like that, like it doesn't have anything to offer. So I'm pumped about that. So, yeah, that was with my main reasons. Some of my main reasons why I canceled the PS4, because I just didn't want to fork out $500, have one game, and then have to start churning out money for that. And then I couldn't go, you know, I, it was like I was going to have to make a decision, an instant decision, you know, and I, I'm i enjoying my retro life and I love the retro games. There are there's tons and tons of games that I remember playing, but I never owned or games that I've been interested in, in having in my collection. And so... I don't ever want to pass up the opportunity because of expenses. You know, you want to keep everything like I um, talked about in the breaking the bank video. I, I've I've learned to budget things and keep things at a logic point 
to where I don't overdo it. And I just felt like right now there is no reason for me to have it. You know, I, I love the way it looks and I am a Sony freak. I love Sony. I mean, I got games for all the systems, the PS1, 2, and 3, except for the 4. And so I just didn't see the logic behind that. But I did like your feedback because I did get some people that was like, man, that's not a good enough reason because of the software lineup or man, I understand or man, this is that's crazy that you're doing that. And it's like, oh, you're going to miss out. And I just don't feel like I'm missing out. You know, some people and what you have to understand about me, too, is that I've never really been the person that liked to be trendy or do the trendy thing. That ice bucket challenge, ice bucket challenge was the first thing that I really ever did that was trendy, and it was only because I was called out. Had I not been called out by my good buddies, I would have never done it. I, I would have just avoided it altogether because I like to do my own thing, you know, and I like to be a part of things, but nothing that's trendy. And trendy to me is just like when a whole bunch of people are doing it. I mean, when you got a handful of people are doing like when we do video response, it's a small body of people that's doing it within the game community that I can respect because we're really it's like communicating. We're communicating somewhat of the same thoughts, but then we kind of put our own spin on it. And that's what I love about video responses. That's why I'm always advocating or pushing for people to do video responses. So anyway, um, another one that I wanted to get my elaborate a little bit more on was time spent playing video games. Some people told me their time was the same amount, two hours after work and the weekends, they just go crazy. And, and some people said they still buy games, but they don't they don't even play them. And, you know, they might fit in a few hours. And what's funny is that. Over time, as my son has gotten older, because I only got one child and he's 15, I've had more and more time. The less time he plays, because when he's in the house, because usually he's outside for the majority. But when he's in the house, he usually hogs up the PS3 or the living room TV. And so really, it kind of pushes my downtime on gaming. I, I really game less. But now that he's out more. I game more. I've I've actually stepped up my gaming and I've been buying all these new handheld devices too. So that's giving me more time and I have free will to play whenever I want because my wife doesn't come home to the evening and I get home several hours before she does. So when she gets home, I usually talk to her. So usually I stop down a little bit less by the time she gets home. So it was pretty interesting to just hear other people's thoughts and stuff. But yeah, my gaming time is definitely picked up. I just finished Infamous and I'm picking up a new game. I definitely want to get into the RPG because it's been several, several months. Uh, Nino Cooney took up so much of my time and I feel like I got enough time of 50 to 100 hours to devote to um, to an RPG. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, I'm going to transition over to the gaming news. I know I probably won't release this podcast till next week sometime. So by the time I release this podcast, this news may be old news, but I'm going to say it anyway, just because I thought it was interesting. Um, Destiny tops the $500 million in 24 hours, which I was surprised about because honestly, I thought Destiny, and this was this was just my initial impressions when I heard the price tag. This was before the beta, before E3, before the bundles, before the pre-orders, and hearing everything that we know now. My initial thoughts, like right out the gate, was, "Oh, this shit ain't gonna sell." You're talking about five hundred? It, it costs five hundred million dollars. Like, I was like, "What the fuck? They spent five hundred million dollars to make this shit." I'm thinking to myself, no, they're not. They're not going to be able to make that. I mean, they're not rock star. You know, they're not um, Activision. You know, they're not uh, Ubisoft or anything like that. Those those companies have made an establishment. You know, they've established themselves. They've they've built a foundation. They've made their place in the gaming industry. 
those are like the gaming gods. We know that those guys will, no matter if it's trash, it's still going to do well. I mean, look at Assassin's Creed. They're getting out of control and shit with dropping two fucking games in one year. You got Assassin's Creed Rogue and Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, like my boy, um, Gamer2323, he was like, he was like, he said, no, them bastards, they don't want to be mainstream. <laughs> they want to do something different. So we're going to drop two games in one year. So I just think that's absurd. But um, anyway, yeah, I, 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 I was blown away. When I started seeing all the pre-orders, because I'm all I'm a statistics guy and I love numbers. I, I geek out over numbers. I'm like one of those mathematical nuts, man. I when I was in college, I went all the way up to calculus. So yeah, and trigonometry and stuff like that. So those numbers and stuff like that, I don't know what it is. I I love it. So yeah. Uh you can paint my face whatever color you want. But yeah, it's it's awesome. It's awesome to see. A new IP, it broke records for a new IP to do 500 million in one day. That's that's impressive. So that means this this franchise is going to be around at least for the next few years or so because they got they already got plans for storylines for the next upcoming and everything. And this is just one day. So that's really impressive. And I think Rockstar in three days made a billion dollars. In the first day, it did eight hundred million dollars for GTA Five, so that's really impressive. So hats off to them and congrats on that, because that's really awesome. I mean, everywhere you go, and the the thing about it that made it exceed the numbers was because they put it on all platforms. They put it on the three hundred and sixty, PS three, PlayStation, Xbox One. The only one they didn't put it on was PC. So. And then one that's been going back and forth and is finally getting a release is Watch Dogs, um, November 18th on the Wii U. I, I really don't care too much, but I guess to an extent, those gamers need to experience third party games like any other system out there. They spent their hard earned money. And that's what I'm like, you know, diving back to what I was saying earlier, man, if, if I spent my hard earned money, I want to experience. I want the full experience and there's limitations right now. So I think we, you is starting to take a turn sales wise. They're still struggling. They're not doing like just these phenomenal numbers or anything like that. They're still struggling, you know, and it's, and I, I, I think that's why this is going to be, you know, because it said in the article, this is going to be the last mature game that's coming to the Wii U because they're not going to spend that money putting out this product for a franchise or for a console that don't have enough people to support it. You know, that's why these exclusive games for Xbox One, it's only sold about five million consoles at this point. If you've already spent more money than the average amount that would be needed to sell in order to balance out your books, you're going to lose in that game. That's why uh, Titanfall pretty much didn't sell that well, because not all that many people were interested in it. And you only had so many people that had an Xbox one to begin with, which they should have already did a cross platform anyway. They should have put the shit on both PS4 from the gate. And Xbox One, which they are going to. I mean, because at this point, PS4 is at 10 million. From the last time I checked, I think it was at 10.1 million or something like that. It's probably even at 11. So there's a 5 million console gap at this point. And Sony even came out and they were like, they're so surprised at the sales. They don't even know where it's coming from. Well, when they started pulling back the curtain a little bit on the PS4, about they said more than half of the people that bought the PS4 never owned a PS3. They owned a 360 because they did surveys and that's how they were able to come up with their statistical numbers and stuff like that. So I found that fairly interesting. But Sony is just overwhelmed and surprised with the amount of sales that they've received thus far. I mean, it hadn't even been a calendar year yet and they already sold 10 million consoles, which is so far ahead of the PS3 
because of all the the problems, the graphical, you know, the um, the chip processing chip, the processor chip and stuff like that that they use with the PS3 just made it so difficult. So yeah, those were things that was interesting to me, and as far as the gaming news and stuff like that, and so now I want to kind of transition over to talking about tips. And reason why I want to talk about the tips, helping people really is going to be more about helping people help their channel grow, uh, do some th different things and stuff like that with their channel. Um, what can they do better? You know, I've been hit, you know, I get constantly hit up with emails, direct messages, tweets, uh, Facebook. Hey, can you subscribe to my channel? And I'm just going to say this as a clause. Do not ask me or beg me to subscribe to your channel because it's kind of a turn off because I've heard it a lot and I would rather you say, hey, can you check out my channel? I'll do that. And if in the process I like what I see, then I'm going to subscribe. But if I can see because that's the thing. I hardly ever, I, I've actually did a clean out of all my subscribe, uh, well, subscriptions, channels that I was subscribed to that realistically I wasn't watching. And if I don't have any relatable, you know, any relate relatable factors that tied us together, any correlation or whatsoever that I can draw between your channel, and my channel, or just on a personal level, you, who you are as a person, if I don't see that, feel that, then eventually I cut people off. And it's nothing personal. It's just that I don't need to be subscribed to a channel that I'm not going to watch. You know, this ain't cable. I don't have to have 500 channels and realistically only watch 100. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this shit just don't make any sense. And it's nothing towards the people. Now, I don't mind people asking for outright help as far as what can they do better? Because I, I myself, I went through the same thing when I was coming up. There was channels out there doing tips, but they were so far in between and it, it was kind of ridiculous. It's like you got this wealth of knowledge and you're not bestowing it upon us. I will honestly say the first year and a half of my channel, I did videos, but they were far in between and they weren't they weren't consistent like I'm doing now. And I have to say that's. That's one of the things is consistency. If you're going to drop a video a week, keep it, keep it that way. You know, if you're going to drop two videos and you drop down one and then you go back to two, that's fine. But as long as you're consistently dropping videos, because see, people have to have something to tune into. Your channel is much like a TV show. You have to realize people have to have something to tune into. That's how my numbers grew quicker. Like this year, I picked up almost 400 subscribers and that's in comparison to almost the year and a half to almost two years that I was on YouTube. I didn't I, I struggled back and forth. I lost a tremendous amount of subscribers. I lost when I went back and look at the numbers, I lost about 50 subscribers. And it was only because there was times where I drop a video maybe once or twice a month and it would be so sporadic. People couldn't depend on me. And so consistency is definitely key. Then another thing, make sure when you are dropping these videos, it's something that you could watch. If you are cringing in the face when you watching your own video, we're going to cringe too. Now, all the videos that you drop are not going to be like top par exceptional, you know, and it's OK to put a video out. But as long as it's close to your normal stuff where people can say, OK, they can identify this is life spillers videos, not just because I'm on a video, but this is close to the content he's used to dropping. OK, granted, then, yeah, roll with that. Go with that. Make sure you stay in that realm. Then um, also the description of your video. I when people would. Oh, my God. Shit. When people will say, go check out their channel. First thing I always do, I go look at the description. Why? Because I want to know more in detail. Elaborate. Tell me some stories in that video. 
in, well, in that description, your description is your tell all about your video, where you can be found, other links that you are link, you know, other places that you're linked to. Cause I want to know what else you do because when I become a part of your channel, I become a part of you. And that's how your channel grows too. So you, you definitely want to do that. And then also topics address that at the beginning. If you notice, I have a tendency to do that now. It's almost a subconscious thing. Whenever I start out, I say, Hey, it's me, Life Spiller 79. It's my show. Glad to be back to do another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about what makes a good video game right off the top. You know, not just the top, not just the title of the video, because some people do that and but their titles are god awful. I don't know what the fuck is up there. They it just be random thoughts and stuff. And this is not to point at nobody or to rant or bicker, but it's just like we want to help you out. I like to see people grow because I know YouTubers out there, they put out some awesome shit, but they just drop a video and they expect it to do so many views easily without feedback, without anything. And it's just like, no, it doesn't work that way. There's so much behind the scenes that you have to do when you're doing your video. So make sure you stay on topic, make a discussion about it. Use a creative title if you can. And also the category of the video. Make sure you're putting it under the right category where it can be seen, where it can be seen. If this is going to be a vlog, where you're just going to talk, put it under the vlogs. There's a category for that. If you're going to talk through a whole fucking video, which is no problem, do that. <laughs> it's no problem. Nobody's going to shoot you for putting it under a different category. This is your content. You can do whatever you want. You are the creator. You can do whatever you feel like doing. But if it's going to be strictly video games, then you put it on gaming. So it can be seen. And then also when you are doing your title, this is just a mix together. See what other videos that did really well, how they title their video. If you notice, I use specific titles. I don't just put random stuff up there. There are times where I do because it's just I just feel like it. But if you want more of an audience to catch what you're talking about because you you know because my i guess my thinking is i put in a lot of work a lot of time editing processing putting this video together you know and 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 i love it and i'm so fucking glad that you guys see the passion see the love i love to convey that retro and video games and you guys i love you guys and i i respect you guys and the commenters and you know, I was talking to Sprites and Brights the other day and um, through some of the comments, I said there was a low point for me when nobody was commenting on my videos and I would look down there and I would always see his name down there. And that shit meant the fucking world to me. I mean, it is. It'll never that 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 keeps me motivated, you know, but now when I go on and drop a video all these people and see, that's another thing you want to comment on their comments because it makes things personal. I personally know people now, you know, like when I talk to Gigi, I know her like I go back and look at other videos that she's commented on. My channel is not that big or my ego is not that big to where I can't go look at other videos. People have suggested to me to check out and go look at and stuff like that. I try to stay authentic and as real as possible with you guys. And I'm so glad that you guys get that. And that's why I'm doing this because I have people out there that I want to see grow, but they need to understand these things. Um, now the next thing is try to set a specific day to record. If you can, I will be honest with you. The days that I record is Mondays. I record Mondays and I usually because Mondays is usually a shitty day anyway. And so the highlight of my day is knowing that, hell, I get to come home and record. That may be a day I'm probably not going to game or whatever. And I do several videos, 
Yes, I do several videos. I don't just do one video. I try to knock out as many videos as I can, two or three or whatever, because then there may be a week ahead of time that you, you may be offbeat, tired, and don't feel like it. You might not feel like recording at all this week, but you got videos in your storage. So you can pull those out and talk about some shit or you can drop some stuff and it works out perfectly fine. Editing or actually, well, the interactions, like I was telling you, interactions is definitely key, but also being a part of the community, the gaming community, comic. If you do comics, be a part of that community. You do horror films or movies or whatever be a part of that community you have to interact on social media sites i am on youtube twitter instagram um i'm on ssrcg which is a blog uh, or actually a forum i'm on there i'm on collections.com um i'm soon to be on game shed's uh website as well um what else am i part of Oh, I'm on Google Plus. Uh, so you can find me in a variety of places. I'm on Facebook. So I'm on, I've named at least six places that I'm on and I'm on those places consistently. And the thing is, when comp, I put alerts on my phone so that when I get a notification or somebody responds to a comment or somebody leaves a comment on any of those places, I know about it. And guess what I do? I go back and comment on it. That's interaction. This person knows, OK, I can touch base with this person. He's real. He's alive. It's not just a robot dropping videos and then expecting things to just happen. No, this journey has not been easy, but it's been rewarding. I've met so many people across the globe. I was talking to this dude in Sweden. I partnered. I, I've been talking to this one guy in Finland. I. I've been talking to this one guy in Holland and and we talk through email. I mean, there so many people around the globe that I probably would have, you know, my some of my good buddies in Australia, UK. And, you know, I got so many buddies overseas. It's ridiculous. So. But that's the benefits of social media interaction with others. You know, you don't. You don't just drop a video. If this is your passion, this is your love, you convey that message. And you the thing is, what ends up happening in the midst of those conversations is that I end up finding new people. That's how my topics you wonder where all these topics come from in the midst of conversations. We might start talking about um, Mega Man 2 or something, but then eventually we, we end up talking about our home life and you know we end up talking about our wives or our kids or whatever or they may talk about whoever they're with you know and just how how their life is treating them if they're sick and you know how they they battle through a cold or they're getting over something you know none of that stuff is off topic for me so it's important to do those things because you build relationships and people will go back and they will vouch for you and they will say hey I know this guy by the name of Life Spiller 79. He has a pretty fucking awesome channel. You should watch his videos. The dude is down to earth. He talks about some old retro shit that we used to play as kids. You remember this such and such game? And they start going in yada, yada, yada. He's like, yeah, man, here's a link to his channel. And then boom, I got a new subscriber or I got a new viewer. And some people say they just met me through scrolling through Google Plus because of people that's already subscribed to my channel left a comment. And they like, that's how I found you. I've met some of the best people through Google Plus. So, yeah, it was pretty shitty in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. I hated the way it forced people to do the commenting. And now we've transitioned through there. We got over. It. We've evolved. We've moved forward. So, yeah, that's important. Video responses. I am. Um, I'm all about video responses because that opens up. What you have to realize when you do a video response, you open up a door for a new audience, even if it's only five people or 10 people through that video response from somebody else's channel sees your channel. Those are five to 10 new subscribers. So their audience gets to see you and they're like, oh, they're kind of relatable. I can relate to this person. Oh, I like what he's saying. And I like what he's saying because I'm already subscribed to this guy's channel, but I like what he's saying or I like what she's saying. 
I've gotten so many new subscribers just off of video responses. And that's and another thing is shout outs. Make sure you shout out channels. I shout out channels, big, small, whatever, you know, because somebody's got to pull them up so nobody gets left behind. This is a gaming community for fucking God. Oh, my God. <laughs> for goodness sake, we have to make sure that we work together. That was my whole real purpose of doing this podcast is that it's about the tips. It's about the community. It's about the channel. It's about interaction. It's about helping out others. So you have to make sure that you don't forget those behind you. So I go after the big channels. I shout out the big channels. I shout out small channels. It doesn't matter far in between. If I see potential, I'm going to say that to him. Like I was talking to Simply Retro and he I just he was so ecstatic about his channel being shouted out. You know, he said, man, I, I've been been busy. I just been busy. And he's like, but by you doing that, it motivated me to want to go ahead and work on my editing and drop out some more videos. And I was like, great, because people are waiting. So do it. Um, likes people, people, people. I don't know if you know the importance of liking people video. Um, I mean, even if you you don't like the video. But you enjoyed what you saw, hit the like button, because what happens is that it allows new viewers to come in, new subscribers, new commenters, new interactions with other folks to come in. By my videos being liked, it's pushed my videos up. I reached 100 likes on one video for the first time out of the two years that I've been on YouTube. And that was phenomenal. That was showing the power of the video, the audience, you guys. So if you if you go on my Facebook feed or my Twitter feed, you will see. Oh, my God, you will see countless amounts of videos that I've liked because I know the importance of liking somebody video, not just liking it personally, but showing that I like it by hitting the like button is not the hardest thing. It's two seconds out of your day. One, two, bam, you hit like continue to watch the video, even if you only watch a quarter of the video, like you only watch two minutes out of that 10 minute video, hit the like button because it helps. It really helps. It pushes it pushes my videos up. It pushes other people's videos up. It gives them a chance to be seen on a higher platform, because one thing I do like that YouTube is doing is that even if my video is new and it's on a specific topic, it's already at the top. But by you liking it and viewing it and commenting on it, it stays up really high. That's how. um how video games saved my life. That video is almost at 1200 views and it's at like 140 likes or something like that. I don't, I don't, I can't even count. I haven't, I lost track a long time ago. I just occasionally I'll look at it because that in my room tour video did almost 1200 views as well. And so I'm just blown away. But yeah, definitely do that. Make sure you do the likes. Um, also, make sure you keep the audience attention, you know. Talk about something that's relatable. Talk about, you know, if you got to write down your thoughts and go back over those things. I Most of the stuff I do, I do it free ball. I mean, I just do it off the top of my head because that's just the way I think. I'm just my, I'm very energetic. I got a lot of energy running through my body. So sometimes if you notice, I'll slow down in my speech. And I'll talk slower. But then there's time where I'm just talking really fast and I get a whole bunch of words that have come to my head and I can just go ahead and talk really, really, really fast about a certain thing. And I can go in and out about a certain topic, just top topic, just because I know so much about it and it pumps me up and I'm excited. But then I'll slow down. But that's just how my brain works. So if you need to start writing things down and find things that's going on currently in whatever you're interested in, gaming or whatever. Talk about that and put it out in the community. That's why I've been doing these videos lately. Just trying to see what people think. I want to know your thoughts. I, I want I want your thoughts on these certain topics because I'm thinking this myself and I've had plenty of time. I go talk on so many blogs. I mean, I, 
I spent countless hours talking to people about gaming. And so I'm like, man, I should do a video about this. See how the community feels and shoot it out there and see what happens. So, um, yeah, definitely do that. And this one is really, really important. And it's one that I had to learn to do. Have tough skin. I think with a lot of people, they go away after a certain amount of time because they don't have tough skin. People are going to say some grimy shit about you. They are going to poke at you. And it ain't just the trolls. It's just people in general who don't get your content. And if they don't get you, we tell them to get the fuck off your channel. It's just easy to say. But <laughs> but the, the big thing is with having tough skin is that you have to realize that you can't allow what's being said to affect you. This is a moment. And that's it. I've seen so many YouTubers get shot down and go off of YouTube. But and then they try to downplay it and act like. Well, I'm just tired of YouTube and I, I don't want to do videos and really, truly in their heart, they're passionate about it. They love it. But because they don't have tough skin. I've had people call me a fucking child because I play video games. I had people tell me I need to grow up. I've had people say, no, you're wrong. I've had people tell me to my, you know, that's a stupid game. Why would you even say that's a good game? That's the shittiest game I've ever heard of. I've had people just go. <clears throat> on and on. So rather than feed into that, I asked them a question. Well, why do you feel like this game sucks? Or why do you think this and this and that? Because I would rather hear your points than just you spazzing out and just saying a bunch of random stuff. Because people have a tendency to do that because they think it's kind of cool to sit behind a computer and hit a keyboard and stroke a few keys. But then when you're being challenged, it's like, OK, but then because you know what? From that, I actually grow. I learned something that because I had to learn. And this is something I learned over time is not to worry about people not liking the games that I like because is that going to change how I feel about that game? God of War 3 is still my favorite game. Regardless, people think it's the shittiest game. They think there were so many glitches, errors, graphical problems, storyline issues. They just thought it was the dumbest thing. But to me, I think for me, the reason why it was such because of the building of that moment and and the anticipation and then that being exceeded everything I wanted out of the game. It came out of that game and more so. You know, but you have to have tough skin and you can't allow the views to be when the views are not where you want them to be. Don't allow that to affect you. Just keep pushing, you know, keep move on to the next video, drop out more videos, stay active, stay continue, you know, continue to stay focused in this because it's important. So don't lose sight of what you're doing. Remember, the main goal is this is your channel. You get to talk about whatever you want. And that just brings me to my last point to enjoy the journey, because if you're pissed off and you're in a shitty mood, you're not going to remember the accomplishments. Like I remember my 250. I remember my 300 subscribers, 400, 500 subscribers of contests. And I remember all these videos that I dropped this year talking about the 40 year old gamer and, you know, and, and just talking about my experiences, um, games that I bought that I that I don't play or games that I, I shouldn't have added to my collection and you know just getting feedback fan feedback viewer feedback subscriber feedback and whatnot and just talking about all kinds of stuff showing off my collection one by one which I'm still going to do I'm just going to break down my collection and just continuously show off each section of my collection because I think it's it's important because like I said with a tour video you get like a glimpse but a breakdown, you get to see everything. So I just think it's important. Well, other than that, this is Spilling My Guts, Episode 9. I'm Life Spiller 79, and I'm out. Okay, so one thing that I noticed I didn't talk about, um, I went back over and listened to the podcast, was editing and making certain special effects. Editing is very vital or key, I should say, 
because editing adds that extra element to your channel based off of the software that you may have available. You work with what you have. You know, you may have limitations on what you can do. Like when I first started out, I just had YouTube as my editor to be able to stop, cut out certain points and stuff like that. And I slowly um, built up to other software programs that allowed me to utilize and have capabilities to be able to put in pictures and videos and stuff like that. And all that stuff takes timing. And, you know, so that adds on to an extra element. But editing is definitely important because you want to cut out, you know, especially if a video has a lot of just ranting and not ranting, but just more of running on a tangent and you just continuously talking about the same thing for like maybe five or 10 minutes when you could have just cut that down to like two minutes. So editing is definitely important. If you find it vital to keep it in the video, keep it in the video because I've chopped up a lot of stuff. I've been in a point where I try to keep my talkie type videos down to about 10 minutes and then my um, video game video, you know, like game finds. I kind of let those run free ball. You know, I edit them for the most part and then other videos where I'm incorporating all kinds of little pictures, videos, special effects, any little sort of thing. I try to keep those with a certain time frame, but it, it takes time and it's a lot of work that goes into editing because what I do is I shoot my videos for one day and then I edit them the next day and then maybe the day after I release them. That way I have enough time to do everything that I want to do because if you smash all that together, which I used to do, you'll be exhausted, especially on a regular work day. You work, come home, record, edit and put the video out. That's too much on you. So, yeah, that was just one last element that I wanted to add in. Hope you enjoy this. Hope this has helped out um, anybody out there that's willing to listen. And like I said, again, you can download the podcast and listen to it on the go. So it'll help you out. Other than that, I'm Life Spiller 79. This is uh, Spilling My Guts, Episode 9, and I'm out.